Hey folks, welcome to this guide devoted to the Switch Glaive. So the Switch Glaive is a weapon that I've seen played in a way that just isn't the most exciting. If, if I'm to be completely honest. Uh, most players that I've seen play the Switch Glaive use pretty much one of two things. Which is they will spam mid stance and then do Cyclone 2 and then do a high stance strong attack uh, or just switch to the high stance and that's pretty much it so let me just show you the exact string that i see and this is definitely not the most exciting thing to see after a while well not even that i can't even do it something like that all right that's pretty much all i see these days and so that is certainly effective, but that's probably not what you necessarily want from a weapon guide. You want to understand how to really play this weapon well. And the reason why I brought that common string up is simply because I feel that it's really neglecting one of the biggest strengths of the Switch Glaive, and that is, as the name suggests, being able to switch in between the stances and keep a combo chain going almost indefinitely. The switch stance abilities form the crux of this weapon and if you play this weapon w with only relying upon any one of these and you just don't use them all together then you're really going to not be able to enjoy this weapon as much as you could. In fact, the Mystic Arts pretty much do incentivize you changing your stances frequently enough to get 5 stacks so you can hold square and unleash demonstrating a devastating strike against the enemy there's two versions of this one that boosts your attack damage one that reduces your key consumption and i go with key consumption so i can keep chains going for much longer but you if you really want to understand how to play this weapon you gotta use these three abilities at all times so if you're comfortable with pre-shifting then or if you played switch clay first you're probably already good at pre-shifting then this weapon will become that much easier for you to use now, again, a lot of these abilities seem unclear. They don't have as much, say, clear-cut power as much as other weapons. But the main thing with Switchglaive is, is that if you play this like a traditional weapon, where you just do, let's say, you know, square, square, triangle, and then key pulse, switch to your stances, and then, you know, key pulse and whatever, like you might say with the sword, it's just going to feel like a lackluster weapon. So you do want to get into the habit of continuously changing your stances so that you can have all sorts of crazy power plays. And it becomes remarkable as soon as you learn about that so that you can just keep the differentiation of abilities just going. That was the weirdest way for me to say you can keep your opponents guessing. Not really guessing because they're not uh, hu real humans. But... If you change your stances, you can do oh so much. That was such a great demonstration. You know what? I'm going to have to try this over again. You're making me look bad, man. You're making me look bad. Okay, I'm just making myself look bad. <laughs> Let's give him the e-bone hammer, all right? That, that, that's what this guy deserves. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. Let's try that again. But let me show you the differences between speed of just playing it very normally, like other weapons. It's just not as inspiring. Oh, I have, a, I have such a habit of playing the Switchglaive as it can be played. But now I'm just gonna show you some speedy type play with the Switchglaive that makes all the difference. Might as well do that. Cool! I just did a whole bunch of stuff, released a really powerful attack, which was the whole uh, hold square after five stacks thing. Um, I'll demonstrate how that works again. But yeah, it just seems so much more different than just say like, hey, I'm playing the sword or whatever. So let's first talk about it getting those five stacks, like how you do it. You just hit with the switch stance ability. All right, that's it. So I'm gonna switch to low stance, get a hit, and every hit counts as a stack, as you can see for me. And believe it or not, getting the stacks really isn't that difficult. Alright, now that I have five stacks, you see how there's kind of like a special symbol? Well, hold square. Insert it into an enemy and do a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage, alright? Really good. Also, I'm going to see if I can showcase something with it.
Okay. All right, I need you out of key. I need you to do something I can work with. Believe it or not, the switch glaive like insertion part when you do the super attack has parry frames on it. And what's the timing for that? It's basically the same as timely guard or haste timing. Frick, can't do it on burst attacks. All right, let's see if I can do it now. Nope, I wasn't able to get the whole square thing in time. Come on, let me try it again. Dude, can I not do it? I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying here, man. There you go. You can do it on burst attacks. I just sucked at it. But it's very similar to timely guard timing, haze timing. So you can parry the next attack and then follow up with an ability. It's so cool. Let me demonstrate it again on a human who is a little bit more predictable compared to Yokai. Gotta be, I guess I gotta be. There you go. Boom! Oh, it made him recoil. What, what you doing? So maybe a little earlier than time to guard timing. Very slightly, but it's so good to be able to parry just slightly off of it. Just to, It's not really a technical parry, but it is so good. So yeah, probably, maybe something you didn't know about. All right, let's let's allow him to get another hit and let's try that again. Come on, one more hit, let's go. Boom, beautiful, right? So yeah, after you get five stacks, hold square, and then you'll insert the switch glaive into the target and then release it to do a whopping amount of damage. And also you can block an opponent's attack at the same time, unleash the ability and it's so good and it can send them reeling back. And there's some brief hit stun even against Yokai. Don't believe me? I don't believe myself. Let's do it again. Cause it's so addictive. Wee wee wee. All right, does it stun? Let's find out. Oh no, I whiffed it. Yeah, you don't want to get hit while you're aiming for the super attack. All right, let's let him get his key back and then I'll demonstrate it. All right, and go. Oh, that was a lot of damage. Um, I. I broke his horn. That did a whopping amount of key damage. I gotta demonstrate this again. It's okay, guys. I'll get it. I'll get it. I promise. Alright, I need him to refresh his key. This is not gonna be accurate otherwise. Okay. Now let's see. Insert! Boosh. Yeah, brief little hit stun. So, pretty nice. But okay, enough about that. Here, take the hammer. Take the hammer. Take the hammer even though you're dead. Break that head. So yeah, that's some interesting stuff when it comes to the Switchglaive right away. But now you may be wondering, how the heck did he get stacked so fast? And there's a few things coming with that. Of course, I'm familiar with the weapon. But one of the things I want to kind of leave a disclaimer for is that don't just obsess over the stacks. Getting the stacks is actually pretty easy and is in my opinion kind of a trap. Like it's nice for me to be able to reduce my key consumption by I think like nearly 30% or if you're using Wildfire Flux, get more than or around 30% extra damage and that's great. But if you just use the switch stance abilities in order to only get stacks without using their utility, you are gonna miss a huge part of this weapon. All right, so Getting stacks is easy, like super easy. I can probably get it in like a few seconds, all right? <laughs> that was pitiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay, dude. Okay. Um, uh, let's, let's pretend, let's, between you and me, that never happened, okay? That never happened. <laughs> uh, you can get the stacks in a few seconds. Come on! This is sad! Okay, well, it, 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 I, I got the stacks, okay? 
I got the stack, so let's, let's just try it again, all right? Okay, see, I got the stacks pretty quickly. That time. I got the stacks really quickly that time. Cool, yes. Notice me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I Hopefully I made my point. But if you just chase the stacks, you are missing out on a lot that comes with the Switch Glaive. The fact that you can fluidly transition in between the stances allows you all sorts of flexibility. So for example, going from mid to high stance is pretty clear. It's a pretty straightforward, like, all right, I can do some reasonable damage, right? And not to mention, the arc of the high stance switch attack generally means you're going to hit all sorts of targets in front of you, which is really nice. And so it's kind of a damage play, and I've been fortunate, and I'm sure you will, to be able to break some horns from time to time. So it's pretty cool, and it's good for targets that are kind of far away. Not too far away, though. I'm going into mid stance. Of course, aside from being able to sequence into mid stance sorts of attacks, it is generally one of the quicker attacks that you can follow up with, all sorts of things. And it's just, it's like pretty cookie cutter. But what about low stance? What about low stance? Oops, that's not, not what, that's not what I meant. With low stance, it's a roll, very quick hit, and it's mostly a martial arts move. Now you notice that you roll, right? There are many moments I've used this to reposition myself against an enemy, to just flat out avoid attacks altogether. Let's see if I am able to pull this off against Aoki. All right. Kind of avoided that. It's also a really good gap closer. So here, check this out. High stance strong. Break the horn, get right into play. So if you just want to get close to your opponent, high stance, uh, low stance switch ability is great. So there is different utility to each of those. So you don't always have to be at close range with the Switch Glaive. You can be far away. So here's some cool little things you can use to incorporate Switch Stance into your gameplay. So as I teased, high stance strong into low stance, but uh, low Switch Stance, I, I, you, you know what I mean. But look at the amount of distance that I can cover. That's quite a lot. Here, let's measure it kind of with spaces here. Let's start from here. And then, that's a lot of distance I covered. Holy cow, man. Enemies backdashing? Nope, don't matter. I'm gonna catch you. Heck, even just a low stance switch alone basically covers like one entirety from this column to this column. That's huge, so you need to close the gap like crazily boom that's a lot of gap that I've closed you want to hit a target that's kind of close and punish them boom hit them with that you just want to be a little speedy with some action go into mid stance boom super nice and so that can change how you use those abilities as opposed to just getting stacks but here's some other crazy things that you can mix in to help you generate stacks pretty quickly. So I'm gonna actually showcase not so much the running attacks first, but the dodge attacks. So high stance dodge attack is nothing particularly remarkable. I mean, yeah, cool. It's just basically the second quick of high stance. I mean, okay, sure. And yeah, you can sequence it into other stances, which isn't too remarkable. Uh, mid stance is pretty quick. Look how quickly I can evade this. <laughs> Sorry, I can dodge and then sequence this. Pretty neat, huh? Whereas with high stance, it's not too fast. I mean, it's okay, but it just doesn't feel as fast as, say, doing this. But then low stance is even dumber. Ready? Look at that. And I'm just... I mean, there's a rhythm you have to get used to for it, but that is remarkably fast. And now with the switch stance abilities, you can be even sillier. One stack right there. And then 
the thing with all the switch stance abilities, since I don't think I mentioned this, is that when you do switch stances, you're staying in the same stance and you can just combo freely from there. So, yeah, again, let me just demonstrate that. I'm going to do mid stance attacks, then I'll do high stance, and then do the high stance combo under. Cool, huh? All you got to do is make sure to buffer an extra attack uh, after. So just do, you switch stances, um, you'll do a normal attack right after. So if you want to do a combo ender, just do like a respective quick attack into a strong ender. So just in case, I just got to make sure I mention that. And voila, you can go into that. But okay. Are you ready for a quick way to get two stacks? I do this very frequently, so I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you what I did, and then I'll break it down. Two stacks. Don't believe me? Let me show you. Presumably, hopefully I don't get hit. Two stacks. Let me get two more stacks. Alright, that was two. Cool, huh? So yeah, getting stacks is not going to be an issue. In fact, your issue is going to be knowing when to stop to key pulse. You don't just want to willy-nilly keep the pressure unlimited going, or going on just indefinitely because one, you'll run out of key, so it's not really possible. But second, you're, it, it just can, just doing the switch stance abilities alone without taking advantage of each of the stances is going to throw you off. But in any case, what was I doing to get those two stacks really quickly? Low stance dodge, okay. And then I was switching to mid stance. Okay, that's step one. Once I've swapped to mid stance without the key pulse, of course. Extra attack, switch back to low stance. And you gotta be a little faster than that. One, two, three, four. And that gets you two stacks. So, yeah. Let me demonstrate that again. Of course, you gotta hit him. Aw, oh, I messed that up. It would've been so cool, right? He gets the hammer. He gets the hammer again. You don't... No. You don't get the pleasure of the hammer. So yeah, that's a quick way to get stacks. And you can kind of use this to your advantage for the low stance dodge attack. A mid stance works as pretty similarly. Like doing an attack here from there and going and just... Keep the switch stance going, but of course you're going to run out of key, so it's actually really important for you to know when to pause very briefly to flux to and regain your key and then just keep going. So key management is actually going to be really essential with the switch glaive, um, even with the mystic art. So that's generally why I stop right here at just two stacks to regain my key and then I can go right back into it. And with with the low the speed of the low stance dodge, it's not really a concern. Pretty cool, huh? Now, high stance strong into low stance the switch stance switch to low. Really good. And then you can mix it in with that combo I was talking about. And if you got enough stacks, the key consumption won't be nearly as bad. And I do that a lot. I'm sure you'll like it too. And you may have noticed, even I've, I'm comfortable enough to know how to avoid many attacks and keep the pressure going, but that low switch stance stuff was able to avoid one of the sweeps. So don't underestimate the value of rolling under certain things and just being able to reposition. Uh, let me demonstrate the value of the low switch stance yet again. Um, just to show you how you can avoid all sorts of things. Dang it, I'm trying to roll around. Actually, it might be better against a human. Let's take a not a key. Against humans, it's actually pretty awesome because it has remarkable tracking. Alright, I need to get him out of key. Okay, dude, you done? Come on. 
Ah! It homes in on targets. I'm not able to demonstrate just how good it is right now, but I've had it where, like, I've done the switch stance and it, like, circled the target to make sure it hit them. It was pretty awesome. So it has pretty good tracking, so you'll definitely want to use that. But, okay, so enough about me splurging about that. Um, let's see what I can squeeze in real quick. So one of the other abilities that functions off of switching stances is thin air. Uh, I don't know why the symbols are hovered over that, but basically it's it kind of puts you in mid stance and then you switch either to high stance or low stance in order to do a different form of an attack. So even though I'm in low stance right now, as soon as I sheath, it sticks me in mid stance so I can decide what I want to follow up with. And if you're again comfortable with pre-shifting, it's really not too bad. And you can actually use these abilities to sequence into other attacks. So for example, if let's say I do this, if I do thin air and go into low stance, what you want to do is do a switch stance ability either into mid or into high stance and then just keep attacks going from there. Conversely, if you do thin air into high stance, then you want to switch to either mid or low stance to keep things going. You can't, unfortunately, go high stance and start attacking. Uh, it doesn't, it just, the ability just doesn't work that way. So, pretty cool. And using that trick I taught you, you can get some stacks pretty quickly. Um, one other really interesting thing about it is thin air, sheath canceling it can actually be a little wonky, in my opinion. You don't actually really need to sheath cancel it. I actually don't. So, reason being, with how many different attacks Switchglaive can do, you actually just sheath on Key Pulse, it basically sheath cancels for you. Let me show you. Look how fast that was. Did you even notice? See how it was kind of slower? So you can like rapid fire it. Cool, huh? See, so trying to just readying it normally, it has like a really long animation. But yeah, uh, pretty cool. So okay, you may ask why else should I switch to high stance as opposed to low stance? So I generally use a high stance variation of thin air when I oh. Dang it, that didn't show it too well. I generally use a high stance variation if targets are somewhat away. Uh, somewhat away. It's reasonably good tracking. And if I feel confident, I can get the hit off. So it pretty safely almost like thrusts and then goes up, right? Alright, so let's see if it'll pull it off. Kind of see that coming through, right? Pretty good. Pretty good, right? Pretty valuable, whereas the low stance one is generally if they're cl if I am pretty confident that they're pretty close. Also, sometimes if I'm at an awkward angle, it can redirect me. Dang it! See how it kind of like hit the target to the side. That's when it can be a bit more valuable. Or if I know I'm gonna get a hit regardless. It's because I want to sequence into high stance. So yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, there's a. I know I barely covered, if anything, any of like the real abilities and how to work with this. This is freaking awesome in the same way in which Hatches is. But I think just being able to understand the core identity of switching stances all the time, incorporating them with various attacks, will really assist you in being able to at least develop a good understanding of this weapon. So hopefully those tips were helpful. And I will of course revisit the Switchglaive because there's so much I gotta cover. But uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that for the Switchglaive. Oh, also, you want a funny animation before I go? Block! And then switch stances! That's not what I had in mind. I, 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 I don't know why I did what I did. Alright. Whee! There we go. Look how weird that looks. In case it mattered. I don't know how we're doing this, but we're doing this. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. 
and I will see you guys next time.